Well, good evening, CCOD, friends and family. Our Tuesday's trending topic, partners and friends. Uh, thank you guys for joining us this evening as we get ready to get into the Word of God. Um, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Um, as you're joining tonight, would you uh, mind, uh, not mind, uh, pressing that share button right there and share the Word of God as it goes forth this evening. I am going to teach the Word of God. I'm going to teach it line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. We're going to go here and we're going to go there. But we are going to teach the Word of God tonight. Last week, I really believe Holy Spirit was just provoking us, you know, to, to get in alignment, you know, to, 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 to be holy before our God. Not perfect, but we serve a holy God who says, be ye holy for I am holy. And that we would make a decision to stop making excuses for our sin nature or the nature where our flesh wants to do what it wants to do. And we will get ourselves in alignment. No apologies for it, you know. It's not on Facebook, but you can go over to YouTube and watch the rebroadcast uh, from the last uh, last week, and it was really a strong um, rebuke. I believe that Holy Spirit just wanted to get our attention, you know, so that we can really walk in the fullness of what God has ordained for us. That there would be nothing hidden, nothing missing. Um, in our lives so that we can allow the Holy Spirit, the power of Holy Ghost to flow through us as an unclogged hose and that we would see the manifested power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in operation in our lives, that we would truly be the living epistles, that we would be the letters that people would read each and every day that we live a holy and a consecrated life before our God. Does it mean that we won't make mistakes? Does it mean that we won't have bad, you know, moments? And um, I won't even say bad days, but bad moments. Absolutely, we're human and in the flesh, we're tested. But when we have the Word of God as our foundation on the inside of us, um, when the Word of God is hidden in our heart, it gives us the ability um, to recognize when we fall short. It gives us the ability to bring a conviction um, when we, you know, desire to do things that are not in the will and in the heart of God. And so um, I, I'm so grateful for that uh, word that Holy Spirit, uh, you know, gave uh, through me on last week. And, you know, I was um, uh, received quite a few uh, uh, calls and text messages and people were saying how powerful the word were, was. There were others that brought you know to light that it wasn't on Facebook and it was it was a mishap how that happened but it is well it's still up on YouTube and um, and so uh, I was really encouraged by that because sometimes when you come with a hard word like that um, it's sometimes hard to swallow but you know when I was um, Receiving those messages on last week, um, I remember I was on one call with one of our, our leaders at the church, and um, we finished that call, and as soon as that call was finished, she was calling me back, and she's like, oh, pastor, she goes, I forgot to tell you, that word was good last night, you know, and then I was talking to another person, and they were sharing how the word was good, and they were like, you know, I want you to bring it like that, you know, every week. You know, I can only bring it the way God tells me to. You know, I will never get up here and operate in the flesh. I'm only going to do and be the caring that God has called me to be. So one week I might bring it the way you like it. Another week I might just teach the word of God. Line upon line, precept upon precept with no emotions. But it does not dilute the power of God. We have to be able to sit under the sound word. Remember last week I shared with you, and it's not a it's not a conviction to anyone, but I have to know who I am in Christ so that when I come before you every week, that I'm being authentically me, that I'm teaching just in the manner that God has, you know, ordained for me to teach. And, you know, she was really encouraged by the word. And, you know, I shared with her, I said, you know what, every time I come before God, you know, I come um, before God's people, it's like there's a trembling. 
that's inside of me. I remember um, a story uh, about Catherine Coleman, and and I've I've, I've held this to my heart. Um, Catherine Coleman, when she would be, you know, at um, the big theater, um, um, holding her crusades and all the miracles that would manifest at her crusade, I remember um, they would say that there was a door that she would have to go through before she would enter the stage. And every time before she would get to that door, there was that knob. And they said that before, as she would put her hand on the knob to open that door, because she would open it herself, her hands would literally be trembling in reverence, not fear of God, but in reverence that she would present God in, in an authentic way every time that she got before uh, his people. And that is truly my heart, is that every time I get before God's people, you will get what God would have me to bring. You would uh, receive the heart of God. You would receive authentically who God has created me to be. And I will tell you that oftentimes it's uncomfortable for me um, to come in a in with a strong word like I did on last week because my nature is 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 by nature my natural nature is um, a pretty soft, but my 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 spiritual nature it, it, I turn into like this warrior woman, and um, years ago. I used to struggle with it afterwards where I couldn't even sleep and I would want to I would want to apologize you know for a strong word but I realize when I look and I read the book of Jeremiah I don't know why I'm spending a lot of time on this but um, I guess I just want yeah but anyway I would read the book of Jeremiah and um, he was the weeping prophet he had a soft heart but yet he would come with a strong word at times and that he couldn't make an apology for it. So um, I guarantee you that every time I stand before God, um, as, I stand, as I stand before God's people, you're getting the authentic Karen. Um, whether I come strong, um, like some people like it, or whether I come soft, like some people like it, um, I try, oh, I'm getting choked up. I try to come in the manner in which Holy Spirit would have me to come. And um, and I, I, I guarantee you, um, not that I'm perfect, but I love and I honor God too much to be anything but authentically who He has created me to be. Whether it makes me uncomfortable when I come before His people, um, whether it um, um, makes me vulnerable uh, before God's people because there's lots of opinions and thoughts, but I can only do the will of my Father. I can only do the will of my Father. And so I thank each of you for um, trusting the anointing on my life, that when you show up on Tuesday night, that you're trusting that I am being uh, um, the expressed image of God through the Word of God and the manner in which He uniquely has shaped and formed me. And so uh, last week was a tough one for me to teach, um, but it is up on YouTube. So um, please, um, at your leisure, go take a look at it. Um, I don't know. I guess Holy Spirit wanted me to get that out. Um, um, and the team that's working with me, they can tell you, today is a tough day for me. My body's a bit tired and a little bit fatigued. But I literally had to stop and just pray and ask Holy Spirit to strengthen me, to refresh me. Um, because when I'm weak in, in my flesh, I know that my God is strong. So um, we just continue to ask the Holy Spirit uh, to, to flow through me as I get ready to teach the word. Let's pray. Father, I praise you and I just thank you right now, God. I thank you for the 
power of Holy Spirit that is speaking through and that will teach through your daughter tonight. That the heart of God would be released with everything that you've placed within me. That your daughter would be hid behind the cloud of glory. That everything that Karen says would be the heart of God. My thoughts, my will, my feelings, my emotions are crucified. I put them at the foot of the cross. I place them on the altar to be consumed, consuming fire, consume the offering of my flesh unto you tonight. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to illuminate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the living word. Let it saturate the airways tonight that we would step away, changed and transformed. And that Yeshua HaMashiach would be magnified, lifted up, and glorified through the living word. In your precious Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's bless the Lord as we get into the word of God tonight. Please press the share button, uh, tag, those on YouTube, please subscribe. I, I, you know, I really want to try to see if we can get up to at least 200 subscribers. And so um, even if you watch on Facebook, please go over to YouTube, our, our church YouTube channel and subscribe. And let's get those subscription subscribers number up. I don't know how that algorithm work. I don't understand that. But I know there's something to it. And so... Um, let, let's do what we have to do to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Um, I just want to talk to the team for one moment. There's something that's showing up that I can't see the numbers, um, just so that I can know my time and won't go over my time. Sorry about that, guys. Can we bless God for the team that helps and works with me? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. So, last week I, I kind of dug into how last week's word went. So I want to start off with saying, may we, God, your children, walk and operate in the power of Holy Spirit. Our heart is that we would desire as the children of the Most High God to walk and to operate in the power of Holy Spirit. So the power of Holy Spirit would continue to uh, be able to illuminate himself in and through us servants yielded submitted servants to the most high god and um the power of god when i want to say this the power of god is the fire of holy ghost the power of god is fresh and unique so the power of god is the fire of holy spirit the fire of God should be fresh and unique. I mean, it, 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 it shouldn't be a copycat. You know, it, it's fresh. It's, it's unique. And we can't put uh, the power of God in a box. You know, we can't mimic what the power of God looks like. We, we can't want to duplicate what the power of God looks like because the power of God will flow uniquely in and through each and every person. Um, if and when we encounter the power of God, um, like, um, you know, the servant Elijah did, um, when we encounter, truly encounter the, the power of God, uh, like, the, uh, like Elijah, his servant did, we will become a terror to the enemy. Literally, we will become a terror to the enemy. And so that is my prayer is that when I get up, when I wake up, when I set my foot on the ground, I would be like that quote, that, that demons would tremble, not because of Karen, but because of the weightiness of the anointing that rests upon my life, because the authority of the word that I've hid in my heart, that the enemy knows she is not to be played with. Not that I'm something so big and, you know, I'm the girl, no. 
but that when I am weak, like I had to stop, literally the team can tell you, I had to stop and just shake it off. And, and, and I just had to say, Lord, I can't go before your people with this edge that's on me. There's an irritance that's on me, an irritance that has nothing to do with anyone, but my body is tired. It has been a busy few days. There's a lot going on in people's lives. There's a lot that pastor and I deal with that people have no idea. And so I'm human. I'm human in my humanness. I'm fatigued. And, but at the same time, there's an assignment that has to be accomplished. And I know that I cannot do it in and of myself, that I have to crucify this flesh and I have to put it under subjection and I have to allow the authority of Holy Spirit to take over. So I yield every part of me that the power of the Holy Ghost would arise. Now, does it mean that, you know, later on I'm not going to carve out some time to make sure that this mortal body gets the rest that it needs? Yes. The older I'm getting, I'm realizing, hey girl, you, you need to take care of this temple. The onus is on you to make sure that you take care of this body. You are the steward of this temple. What I eat, what I put in it, as y'all can tell I've been eating, but I've been more mindful, you know, than watch, watch me, this weight is gonna come off. Why? Because do you not even know that gluttony is a sin? Gluttony is a sin. We look at other things, but if I'm not taking, I can't look at somebody else and, and I'm just overfeeding this 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 temple. You know, some people's frames are, are made to be bigger. That's not my frame. So I have to steward what I put in this body, how I take how I take care of this body, you know, and, and so that the onus is on me for that. So yes, in the normal essence, I'm going to get the rest that I need. I'm going to make sure that I'm drinking the water that I need. I'm going to, you know, over the weekend, Pastor Frank can tell you, I threw away some stuff that was in the cabinets that I knew that if they were in there, I didn't have self-discipline. And because I didn't have self-discipline, that when, at, at nine o'clock at night, when I want to snack on something because something came over me during 2020, during lockdown, and I'm going to go down and eat it. So I, I threw it in the trash. I threw it in the trash. Why? Because I realized that I had not gotten to the place where I had self-control over that thing. So, so uh, this today, I had to really pray. The team can say, I had to step away and pray and say, uh, did, uh, can you just answer behind? Did I have to not step away from the camera and say, I, I can't get before the people because I had to deal with, with I, had, I need Holy Spirit to strengthen me. Yes, yes, you did, Pastor. Yes, I did. So, 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 but when I allow God, Holy Spirit, the power of God to take over, I'm, I feel strengthened now. I, 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 I feel empowered now. But I know that His strength is made perfect in my weakness. That's why as a pastor and as a leader, I'm not afraid to share my weaknesses before you. And I'm not afraid to share that I'm not a superwoman. I'm not afraid to share that I'm not perfect. No, I'm not going to fake it. No, I, I, I know the areas that I struggle in, but I do know that by the power and the authority of Holy Spirit, I can overcome all of that. By the authority and the power, power of Holy Spirit, I've overcome so many issues in my life. And so that's why I'm able to testify of where God has brought me from today and where I am today. And I'm able to testify of where God is taking me. And so I am totally dependent on Holy Spirit and the authority of God's word so that when I get up out of my bed in the morning, uh, demons will tremble in fear that that girl knows who she is in Christ by the authority of the Word of God and by the wisdom of Holy Spirit giving her revelation, a rhema of the Word of God. Because let me tell you something, there's a lot of people that read the Word of God but they have no revelation. There are people that will get up and read a devotion, read uh, their morning uh, uh, word, daily word, daily word as a systematic thing, but there is no revelation. There's no illumination of the word. The scales are still on their eyes. There's no transformation of the heart. There's no cutting of the flesh. I mean, their flesh 
will still expose itself at times. I don't know about you, but I need to, my heart to be circumcised. I need there to be a cutting away of my flesh so that the power of Holy Spirit will show up and show out in my life so that the authority of the Word of God will manifest when I open my mouth and, my, and I speak. You know, Pastor Fred and I, we went to a... Uh, 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 not Pastor Fred and I, I had a speaking engagement this weekend. And well, I, had, I had two in, on Saturday. And the first one that I went to, Macria, my dear friend, she went with me and um, Pastor was at a men's gathering and then he, he drove over and he met by the time I got ready to go up. He was there, which was a pleasant surprise. It was, I almost wanna cry. Because when I woke up that morning, that was my desire is that he would be there with me. I, I just knew how I was feeling. And, uh, but I didn't, wanna, I didn't wanna trouble him. So I didn't ask him. But it was in my heart that my husband would be there with me. And as we're getting to the parking lot, McCray can tell you, my husband calls. And he says, where are you guys? And I go, we just drove up in the parking lot. And he says, the men's meeting is, is finished. And he says, send me the address for where you are. Do you not know that God will even give you the desires of your heart? I didn't verbalize that to my husband. I didn't let him know that I needed him in that moment. But God gave me the desires of my heart. I don't know what desire. I'm not getting very far in my word today. But I don't know what desire you are believing God for. I don't know what secret you're trusting God for. I want you to know that you can trust God with the desires of your heart. You can trust God with the vulnerability of your heart. You can trust God with the cry of your heart. And he will show up. Uh, I said to him as a babe, that was my heart's cry. He says, why didn't you ask me? I says, because I know you're feeling just the way I feel. And, and so I, I wanted you to be able to go home and get some rest. And, and he, said, he said, Karen, I had already um, had it in my heart that when I got out, I was going to come over to meet you. See, God had already dropped that in his heart. And so I just want to stop for a moment and speak to that person right now that has a desire that has been unspoken vulnerable, uh, audibly to let you know that God wants to meet the desire of your heart. That he's not forgotten you. That he loves you so much. He loves you with an everlasting love. And I want you to know that you are not forgotten. God has not forgotten watching the rebroadcast or right here live, God wants you to know that you are not forgotten. So when I get out of the bed in the morning, the kingdom of darkness should be in terror because I know who I am as a woman of God and a true servant and representative of heaven. Can you type in there, I am a true servant and a representative of God. We have to remember that we are people of power and authority because we belong to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has all power and all authority. So when we know that we belong to Christ, who has all power and all authority, we have to know that we have authority too because we've been made in the image of God. The Word of God tells us that we have been made in the image of God. You know, I was looking at a video that Pastor did of me, and there was a certain way in which I put my mouth that I watched my son Ryan. 
that he puts his mouth the same way. And I would think to myself, why does he put his mouth that way? Y'all, I didn't realize I did my mouth the same way. And guess what? My mom does her mouth the same way too. Where I'm an express image of my mother. And my son Ryan is an express image of me. When we talk and we're, we're passionate about something, it's like our mouth kind of moves to the side of it. And, 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 and it's not an act. It's, it's, it's just how God has framed us. And so if I can look like my natural mother and my son can look like his natural mother, how much more would we, should we not reflect our father, our, our godly father? So when we realize that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is at work on our behalf, the same power, the same authority that raised our living Savior from the dead is at work in me and is at work in you today. You know, Isaiah 52, Isaiah 52, verse 1 and 2 says, Awake, awake, oh, Tuesday trending topic partners, partners of Corona Church of the Open Door. Awake, awake. Pastor Karen and Pastor Fred, close your, clothe yourself with strength. So the word of God is telling us that we need to awake. Scripture literally, literally says, awake, awake, Zion. But I am extracting the word of God, and I'm taking the word of God and pulling it for myself. It says, awake, awake, Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of spread splendor, Jerusalem, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. So the sin nature will not enter you again. When you clothe yourself with strength, when you put your garments of splendor on, when you hide the word of God in your heart so that you will not sin against the Lord, it says shake off your dust, shake it off, shake those things off, rise up. Sit enthroned, I mean sit enthroned, the word of God says, Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, daughter, Zion, now a captive. What the scripture is letting us know is that we must arise in power and authority that has been given to us. So when you read over in Isaiah 52, verse 1 and 2, that scripture is prophetically decreeing and declaring for us today that we must arise in our power, we must arise in our authority, but it's also letting us know that we have to free ourselves from the sins, free ourselves from the chains that bound us, free ourselves from the things that tries to keep us in captivity. And it says that we need to sit enthroned. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places from a prophetic, uh, from a, a prophetic uh, picture. And so when we wake up in the morning, do you see yourself enthroned? When you wake up in the morning, do you acknowledge that you are enthroned? When, if, you're, if, you're, if you're living a life of sin or if you're allowing yourself to continue to stay in sin, you can say that all day long, but you are literally disqualifying yourself because we serve a holy God. And, and he is looking for a church and he's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. That's why I'm always using the word of God to examine myself. The Bible says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Do you not know that Peter walked with God? I mean, he walked with Jesus. He saw the miracles that Jesus did. Jesus told him before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Peter says, I'm not going to deny you. Do you not know that exactly what Jesus said? That is exactly what Peter did. And do you not know when Jesus came back and he found Peter, he says, now that you have been converted. So a lot of people can be walking, going to church, you know, have a religious spirit about them, but not truly converted. We need to have a conversion of a heart, a true conversion, so that we can sit enthroned, recognizing the authority that has been entrusted in our care, so that we can see the manifestation of the power of God come to pass. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing me full circle. I was sharing with you when my husband showed up to the speaking engagement.
engagement that I had. This is where I was going with it, but Holy Spirit interrupted it to touch that person that had something that they were believing God for, a secret that they were believing God for. But it brought me full circle. When I got to this conference, when I get out the car, Makriya can tell you, this lady, she comes up to me and she said, everything that you said to me came to pass. She was, I, 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 I came to your conference that you did in November. This was back in November at Pastor Sandra's uh, woman's conference. I mean, at your woman's conference with Pastor uh, Dr. Sandra. And she says, everything that you said to me come to pass. Now, what you need to know, when she came to that conference, I had never laid eyes on that woman. Not one day in my life, not one day had I ever laid eyes on that woman. But she says, but... She goes, everything you said to, to, uh, uh, to me that day, everything you said came to pass. And so, you know, I'm going in to speak, and I'm like, praise God, you know, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around what I said to her, you know. And after the conference, she, she comes up to my husband and I, because pastor showed up by then, and then, and then she begins to say to my husband, she said, everything Pastor Karen prophesied to me came to pass. She said, when Pastor Sandra and I got in the car, they said, she said, uh, it was like Pastor Karen was in the car with us before we had gotten to the conference. So everything her and Pastor Sandra, Dr. Sandra, had discussed before they had came into the conference that we had in November out in Palm Desert, um, when they came and met us at the house, she said, I prophesied to her before before uh, uh, she left. And so she said they were in the car in awe. Like, how did she know that? Not how did she know that. Pastor Sandra knew that it was revelation that Holy Spirit had given to me, right? And she said, but not only were, was I in awe that everything that she prophesied was what we had discussed in the hour and something drive up there. She says, but everything that she said came to pass. Now, I could step back, and I could linger in that and say, I'm the girl. <laughs> oh, it came to pass. Oh, I'm the holy one of Israel. I am nothing without Christ Jesus. I am just a vessel that God used in that moment to speak revelation to his daughter. I'm just a conduit. That Holy Spirit used to speak to his daughter. So I recognized that that authority that was released out of me that day was only by the unction of Holy Spirit. Because I chose to separate and consecrate myself to be yielded unto God. God wants us to be so yielded and so pliable that he would be able to use us at any moment. Now here was a woman that I never met, never met not one day in my life, walks in assisting Dr. Sandra. As Dr. Sandra comes out of the room, because she spoke in the bedroom that night, and the handmaiden of the Lord, the servant of the Lord, was with Dr. Sandra. The power of God fell on me. Paulette was in the room. Vicki was in the room. Cynthia was in the room. DeAndre was in the room. Uh, 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 Pastor Audrey was in the room. Makuria was in the room. And I just began to prop, and my husband was in the room. And I just began to, what, I mean, the power of God just fell, and I just released what Holy Spirit gave. It was just like, it just came over me. But I take no credit for that. The only credit I can take is that I'm a yielded vessel, imperfect, a crackpot, cracked up in so many areas. But the motive of my heart, the me doth, my character trait, is that I want to be pleasing unto my God. God, I don't care about anything or anyone. At the, 
I do care about people. Don't get me wrong. But the opinions of men mean nothing to me compared to the opinion of God. And God, I want to be a mumble playing in your feet. Mold me, shape me, reshape me so that I can be a conduit that you can flow through. So that the power of Holy Spirit would flow through me like an unclogged hose. Y'all, life is but a vapor. The hour that we are in is a very, very delicate hour. It's time for the church to awaken. Scripture says, shake it off. Shake off the sin, the things that so easily beset us. Shake off the things that want to have us bound. The scripture says, I have not preached anything that I thought I would get to today, but this is God. It says, awaken, awaken, O Zion, clothe yourself with strength. How do we clothe ourselves with strength? We clothe ourselves with strength, with this, which is the word of God. Not by might, Zerubbabel, not by power, but by the Spirit of the living God, Holy Spirit at work on the inside of us. But we need the Word of God to be what we stand on. We need the Word, and I don't mean to be a mimic and a copycat. There's too many mimickers and there's too many copycats. No, we don't want to have a copycat spirit. Do you, do you, you know there's copycat spirits that, that, that operate in, in the dark realm. You, you know, there's sometimes mass shootings. And then the next week, there'll be another mass shooting. Then within three days later, there'll be another mass shooting. Copycat spirit in the dark world. There are copycat spirits in the spirit world as well. But they're, they're, they're shooting with blank blank uh, and only those that have a discernful spirit will be able to discern that copycat spirit and there's a lot of people that are going astray behind copycat spirits copycatting the anointing do you remember the woman when, Paul, when they were walking through and, and she and, 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 and the that she had the spirit of divination that in, in scripture, let's go to it. Let's go to it real quick. Oh, Holy Spirit, you have me, you have me all over the place. Hold on one second. predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by foretelling. That was, that was not a true, authentic anointing. Just because she was able to tell the future, just because she operated in a particular manner, did not mean that she had the pure oil of the anointing. And there's a lot of people that are acting and, and working under a spirit of divination, and the church is following after them by the, by the truckloads. Copycat spirits. There will be those that have itchy ears going here, going there, going there, for someone to tickle their fancy. No. The road to destruction is broad, but the road to, to, to salvation is narrow. And scripture says there are few that will find it. Scripture 
goes on to say, she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. Do you not know that that spirit knew that what was on Paul and the others was authentic? And it says, she kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out. Copycat spirit. Copycat spirit. I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. So it does not, it does not catch me off guard. When you stand up for truth, when you're willing to stand and just teach the word of God, bold faced it, that many are not going to be happy with it. They would prefer to go after a spirit of divination that will bring more money into their, Lord help me, their hands, or, you know, that will get the people, you know, to feel like, oh, this is, this is, this is really God. The devil is a liar and his mother-in-law. It's time for the church to awaken, awaken from your slumber. Do you not know that the days that we're living in is evil? It's time for the church to rise up and walk in the true authentic power and the authority of the living God. The devil is a liar. But when you know who you are in Christ, you will stand flat-footed, looking at the enemy square in the face, not in my own strength, but in the authority of the word of God, knowing who you are, and say, get thee behind me, Satan, because the authority that rests upon me is from God. Me prophesying to that woman is from, that's from God. From God. From God. God alone, outside of Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary for me, I am nothing. I am a mere sinner who is saved by grace. If it had not been for the shed blood of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who would I be? If it had not been for the 39 stripes, save one that he took on his back for a sinner like me, messed up from the floor up, that has only been put in right standings through the transformation of my mind, through the authority of the living word. Who would I be? Who would I be? But for the grace of God. I was on a, a group chat with my my friends this morning, Marco Polo, my group of nine girlfriends, eight of us is on there. My cousin, one of my, one of a, one of us isn't on there. And I, and I said, I have to pray for my heart in a particular manner. I have to pray for my heart in a particular manner because I, I, I can feel that there's, there's an edge there. And I have a right for the righteous indignation of what I feel about a situation. I have a right to feel about the injustice that I see. But I cannot allow my flesh to get entangled with, with, with what Holy Spirit is showing me. So I have to cut the flesh off. I have to, I have to circumcise the flesh of my heart. Because remember, I showed you last week the heart of flesh. But I have to cut the foreskin of it off. That I would have a circumcised heart creating me a clean heart, God. And renew a right spirit, a steadfast spirit within me. Daily. The Bible says, above all things, the heart is wicked, desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's why they, when they... When 
I say, you know my heart? No. Who knows the heart? The Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit to see if it is so. I don't trust my own heart. Only way I can trust it is by the word of God. It's time for the church to wake up. This message is nowhere in my
people say, it doesn't take all that. Maybe for you. No, 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 no. I'm not even going to say that. Yes, it does. The anointing is not cheap. It's costly. It costs my Savior his life.
And then if you lean on that, it could be a distraction. But don't let anything distract you. from the direction that God has taken you. Because broad is that way to destruction, but narrow, narrow is the path that I want to be in. And very few, very few, Scripture says, will find their Father, I just praise you and I just thank you now. I thank you for this word, God, that you had me to share tonight. Now I understand why the fatigue was on me so. Because I didn't even share what you had me to put down or what I thought you wanted me to share tonight. I guess it's for next week. But Holy Spirit, I will continue to yield myself to you and speak the heart of God as you direct me. Jesus said he would not leave me comfortless, but he would send me another comforter. And that comforter would lead and guide me into all truth. So I thank you tonight, precious Holy Ghost, that you have led me tonight in all truth to speak the uncompromised word to your sons and your daughters. Father, right now I take authority over every copycat spirit by the power and the authority of your word and by the precious blood of the Lamb. I take authority over the copycat spirits that are trying to draw your people into places and spaces where they will, they will meet their demise where the traps have already been set, set, where the Mordecai spirit has already dug the graves, where the spirit of Amalek has come to attack them from the bed, where the spirit of, 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 um, um, of Pharaoh uh, would come to try to, 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 to try to keep them in bondage and in captivity, where the Philistine spirit uh, would, would try to come and, and close up the wells of living water where, 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 which have been dug like he did uh, to Isaac with Abraham. We take authority over those by the authority of the word of God and by the blood of the Lamb, God. We take authority over those copycat spirits, God, that want to draw your people astray, Father. And we speak, Father God, like Paul did when he turned around and, and he took authority over it, God, by the authority of your word. And he allowed that woman to be set free, God. The scripture, let it be known that that woman, that spirit, recognized that Paul had the true oil, had the true anointing. And, and even though she had power, she continued to follow after Paul. And I ask God that there would just be such a drawing power, God, that would desire for your people to come to you, God, that they would be loosed and set free, God, from everything that would hold them captive, God, from everything that would cause them to go astray, God. That they would come, Father God, to the fulfillment and the true knowledge of who you are as our personal Savior, God. That they will understand that we hold, we serve a holy God. And the word says, in the New Testament, be ye holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. Father, let us take our rightful places positionally, God, and be enthroned with you, for we are seated with you in heavenly places, my Lord. We thank you, God. We give you glory, God. We honor you, God, for we are nothing without you. Crucify this flesh. There are too many, God, in the body of Christ that want to be seen, that want to be known. They want to be uh, the one that, you know, that gets the accolades, God. But all accolades and all glory goes to you. For you said, my God, you will share your glory with no one, God. Be glorified in the lives of your people, God, whether they're on their jobs, God whether they're in the marketplace, God, whether they're on an airplane, God, wherever you will use your sons and your daughters, you'll be glorified, my God. All glory and all honor goes to you. You said that you are a jealous God, Father. And Father, we, Father God, do not
not want to take your glory. That is not our motives, Father God. But this flesh, this unruly thing, it wants to do what it wants to do. It wants to usurp itself. It wants to act like I'm the man. God, we are humble servants before you, walking in the authority which you have entrusted in our care. If it is not for you, God, who are we? Who are we? Mere sinners, messed up from the flora that has been put in right standings, that have been made righteous because of the blood of the Lamb. Let us not make your blood of none effect. Let's not take advantage of your precious blood, your blood that has not lost its power, your blood that reaches the highest mountain, your blood that goes to the lowest valley. No, no copycat spirit. The authentic, pure oil of the anointing resting upon your sons and your daughters. It is so. It is so. Yes. And it shall not be otherwise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'll see you next week. Same place. Same time. Somewhere up in here.